Hello everyone, my name is Jeff Moody. I'm an applications engineer with 3D System Software. Thank you for choosing Shining 3D and Geomagic Essentials. Today I'm going to be talking about the Create by Sections tool. After I'm done with the mesh preparation, I'm going to be talking about all the functions of the Create by Sections tool. There are several dialog boxes with this tool. They include the Define Plane dialog box, where you can set up your initial plane, the Multiple Sections dialog box, where you can set up the amount of sections that you want, the spacing between those sections, and the orientation. And lastly, the most important dialog box, the Curve Properties dialog box. This allows you to choose your curve type, your fitting, and your connectivity. So let's go ahead and step into the demonstration. So this is Geomagic Essentials. Up on top are our four toolbars. In them, they have all the different tools that are available to us in Geomagic Essentials. When I import a part, we will see a fourth toolbar called the Scan Toolbar, which will allow us to manipulate our models. Over on the left-hand side is our Model Manager tree, which once we import something, all of our objects will display in here. We also have a display tab that allows us to manipulate the views of our model and our, and our environment. And then we also have a dialog box for when we're in a specific tool. In the middle here, we have our graphic viewing window where our model will be located that we can rotate, pan, and zoom about. And then we also have a getting started tab. This getting started tab has the ability to select recent files. We have the general tasks such as new, open, and import. And then we also have a resources tab. This is basically a support tab that allows us to navigate to the website, see what software version we're on, or navigate to the help tab. And finally, on the right hand side are our selection tools. I'm going to go ahead and import a part by coming up to the 3DS button and selecting import. Choose my scan. And the first thing that the software is going to display is a units pop-up. We have several different ways to import this, but since I scan this part in millimeters, I'm going to go ahead and select it millimeters and then select the OK option. The second pop-up is the Mesh Doctor pop-up. Upon importing, the software automatically asks me if I want to run the Mesh Doctor, which is going to take a look at the model and detect errors. Here, all of our errors are highlighted in red, and we can see them over here on the left-hand side. I have 3,678 spikes, I have 899 highly creased edges, and so on and so forth. I want to remove these before I do anything else, so I'm going to go ahead and select Apply to have them removed. After I've run the Mesh Doctor once, I still see that I have a few issues still, so I'm going to go ahead and select Apply one more time and try and remove those final issues. Now that those issues are removed, I'm going to go ahead and select OK and exit the Mesh Doctor command. Now I might want to do a little bit of mesh processing, right, such as fill holes, delete holes, smooth areas, so on and so forth. Here's a good hole to take care of. On the right hand side, I want to make sure that my lasso tool is selected, and that I have select through all enabled, and that I also have back faces selected. I want to remove everything that I'm about to select, and I'm now I'm going to go ahead and draw a circle around my hole and then hit the delete key. Up in the scan toolbar under the fill holes group, I'm going to select fill single and make it sure the method is the flat fill. I'll go ahead and select the boundary to fill it and then exit the command. I'm going to do this on a couple more holes, such as this slot here. Again, highlighting the area, deleting the hole, and then deleting this hole as well. Now, if I don't want to fill these holes individually, I can come over to the Fill All and then specify that I want to fill every hole except for the largest hole, which is the one on the bottom. I'll then select Apply. 
and then select OK. To take care of this last hole on bottom, and to make it a solid part, or to make it a watertight mesh, I'm going to relax this boundary a little bit. I'm going to zoom in here just so we can see what's going on. And then in the, in the boundaries group, I'm going to hit the drop down and then select relax boundary. I'm going to highlight the boundary, zoom in just a little further, and I'm going to change my iterations to 100 times. I'll then select apply, and maybe I'll do it one more time. At this point, this is about as smooth as it's going to get, so I'll go ahead and fill holes one more time. Once the bottom boundary is filled, I can then exit the command. We now have a watertight mesh. To make sure it's watertight, I'm going to select the manifold option in the repair group, and then I'm going to say, I'm going to tell the software to make manifold open. What that's doing is deleting any open face triangles that are free floating. And then I'm going to run the mesh doctor one more time. Here I can see that I have, after filling all those holes, I've encountered some more errors. So I'm going to hit apply and try and remove those errors. Still have seven spikes. I'm going to apply one more time to see if I can remove those. And here we have them all removed and I'll select OK. One final thing that I want to do before I move on to create sections is I want to even out the mesh a little bit. I'm going to go into the display tab and then I'm going to select edges. If I zoom in here, we can see that I have some larger triangles here, I have some smaller, more dense triangles in this area, and then I have patches of dense triangles all over the place. To average this out and to get a better resulting mesh, I'm going to come up to Remesh. Here I can change the target size that I want to have to make a more evenly distributed homogeneous mesh. I'm going to change my target length to 0.3 and then I'll select Apply. Now, if we zoom in here, we can see that all my triangles are regularized throughout the part. I'll select OK to exit the command, and I'll turn off the edges in the display tab. I'm now ready to take some cross sections. To do this, I'll go up to the model tab, and then in the free curves group, I'll select create bisections. In the create bisections, we have a bunch of different options. We have the ability to create planes and cylindrical sections. To do this, I need to align them in some manner. Here, if I hit this drop down, we can see all the different ways that I can align them. If I choose line, all I need to do is left click and drag, and then I get a plane in that orientation. More time. If I choose three points, all I need to do is pick three points on a surface and then select the align option and a plane will be best fit to that face. If I choose system plane, I can align to the world axis and then I can choose which axis plane I want to align to, YZ, XZ, or XY. I can also rotate about those planes using these options here by degree. To create an object feature, I'll need to put down a plane first. And to do that, I'm going to exit out of the Create Sections tool. I'm going to go into the Model tab. Under Create, I'm going to select Plane. And then I'm going to select Best Fit. I'll put a plane down on this side using my, using my creased angle selection. I'll highlight this area by left clicking and dragging upward and growing my selection area. I'll then select apply to put a plane on that side. I'll select OK to exit the command and then re-enter create bisection. 
in the Align Planes dialog box. I'll select Object Feature Plane, and then I'll select Plane 1. That allows me to fit a section plane to that plane. Lastly, we have World Feature Plane. I don't have any world features at the moment, so I'm going to go ahead and stick with Object Feature Plane. Here, I can offset my plane from this plane by entering a number here. I'll select negative 2 to go inside the part. And then I'll define how many sections I want to add. In the multiple sections dialog box, I have a couple different options. The sections allow me to enter in how many planes I want to have or how many sections I want to have. I'll enter in 10. The spacing is the spacing between each plane. I'll enter 10 millimeters. Here, I have it on the wrong side of my starting plane, so I'll select flip. I could also change my layout from one way to centered, which would put planes on either side of my base plane. In this case, I'm going to choose one way. And I'll add in a couple more planes. This option, once I've created my cross sections and I select apply, I can either choose to have all the cross sections as one object or as multiple objects by choosing this button here. Down in the curve properties, I can define what kind of curve I want to make. I can change the name of my curves here. And a number will be applied after the first one to each cross section thereafter. I can change my curve type from line arc to spline or polyline. In this case, I'm going to use line arc. In the fitting type, I have a couple different options depending on what my curve type is. Here, under line arc, I can choose local and global. If I choose spline, I can change my fitting to a couple different options. Distance, tolerance, or constant. If I choose tolerance, I can specify how close I want my spline to be to the mesh. And if I choose constant, I can define how many control points I want my splines to have. The more control points, the tighter my spline will be. I'm going to add 40 control points to each spline. Lastly, I'll select apply to apply the command. I'll select OK to exit the command. And here we can see I now have several different sections created under the test folder. Once I have these splines created, I can then export them by highlighting all of them, right clicking, selecting save, and on my desktop, I can save them as an IGES file, and I'll just name them test sketches. Here, I can select export as a single file. That way I only have to import one file. That way I only have to import one file in my downstream applications. I'll select OK. Then I'll go into DesignX and import my then I'll go into DesignX and import my IGES files. And here we have our sections. Now, if I want to create sections in a specific area, all I need to all I need to do is to highlight that specific area. Example, for example, I'll use the crease angle selection tool and highlight this free-flowing surface, or free-form surface. I'll then go into the Model tab, and then I'll select Create by Section. Again, I'm going to change my fitting option to Object Feature, and then I'll select Plane 1. I'll go ahead and offset my offset from Plane 1 into the part a little bit and then set my spacing to 10 millimeters. 
I'll select flipped so that all my sections are in the correct orientation. And I'll change my spacing maybe to five millimeters instead. I'll increase the amount of sections that I'm taking. Uh, let's put in 25. And then I'm going to change my fitting type to tolerance. And I'll put in a 0.1 tolerance. I'll then select apply. And here we can see I only have splines created on my selected face. Select OK to exit the command. And then I'll export those as well. Save them as test, test sketches. And then again, in Design X, I'll import my IGES file. Once we have this, we can then use them to create different things like extrusions and surface lofts. If I come up to the Model tab and I select Loft, I can then start selecting each individual cross-section to create my lofts. And here we have a surface. So let's quickly go back to the slide deck. For more information about the software, the applications, or the solutions, please first email your local Shining 3D representative or go to 3dsystems.com. For sales information and pricing, please first contact your local Shining 3D sales representative or email geomagic.sales.americas at 3dsystems.com. To download a trial or for technical support, please visit shining3d.com or gettingstarted.geomagic.com. Thank you very much.